I'm Pastor Paul Marzon, and it's a joy to be sharing with you in our new F-Bomb series about the Forgiveness Offensive. In our session two today, we're going to talk about how we all need forgiveness. How we all need forgiveness. One of the things I want you to think about is unless we understand sin, we cannot have a clear understanding of forgiveness. You see, sin and forgiveness go hand in hand. In other words, sin, the best definition, is missing the mark or straying from the path. And so when we sin, we offend somebody else. And because of that offense, because we're not doing what God intended, then oftentimes we have to ask for forgiveness. Now, the forgiveness is a process, of course. We've talked about that already. But the beginning part of that process is called repentance. Repentance. Now, that's often a word you hear in churches. You don't hear it in the world as much because repentance is, is more than just saying, I'm sorry. A lot of people say, I'm sorry. You know what? I messed up. But repentance is best defined as turning around and getting the right direction on the path. So if sin is defined as straying off the path, then repentance is best defined by getting back on the path and going the correct direction. So it's more than just saying, I'm sorry. You see, when we ask or we offer forgiveness, we are seeking restoration of a relationship that was severed through our sinfulness or the sinfulness of someone else and the failure to follow God's path. There's a theologian by the name of Paul Tillich, and he had a great way to describe forgiveness. He called it the divine answer to the question implied in our existence. Why are we here? Well, to be in relationship with God and in each other. And this understanding of forgiveness is a part of that, that divine answer, if you will. Pastor Adam Hamilton, we've been um, encouraging people to pick up his book. It's called Forgiveness, Finding Peace Through Letting Go. And in this book, um, Pastor Hamilton says, God's forgiveness is something we know in our heads, and yet we often struggle to accept it in our hearts. So sometimes we understand the concept of forgiveness, but we don't live it out. So true forgiveness occurs when we come to the realization that we are a sinner and that we've hurt others and like we sometimes have been hurt. I want to close with a story. It's a powerful story that I, I read and it, it touched my heart to begin to think about how I've hurt others and how others have hurt me. But it's nothing in comparison to what this woman went through. Her name is Dawn Smith Jordan. And she had to learn about forgiveness the hard way. You see, her 17-year-old daughter was abducted while walking from the house just to the mailbox, right out in front of their home while they were all there. Five days later, Sherry's body was found. You see, the kidnapper had allowed her to, to write a note, though, before she passed away. And soon afterwards, they had received, about five days later, this letter that was mailed to the family. This is what their daughter wrote in this letter. She wrote, I love you all so much. Please don't let this ruin your lives. Keep living one day at a time for Jesus. Don't worry about me because I'm going to be with God and I'll be in heaven. Everything works out for the good for those who love the Lord. All my love, your daughter Sherry. Now when she shared that last verse, her dad couldn't help but cry because that was a memory verse that he put on her mirror just a few days before and taped it on. And he had this tradition of kind of putting scripture on the mirror. And she had memorized that verse and shared it in that last letter. Well, the family's nightmare was unfortunately not over. You see, the killer telephoned the family several times. And he would tell crueling, describing, gruesome details of how he had murdered Sherry. They wanted to hang up on him, but they also knew that maybe if they held on the line that they could trace the call or somehow discover where he was or who he was. So ultimately, this act of cruelty caused them to be apprehended and convicted. Finally, they could put the matter to rest. Justice had been done, he had been caught, and they began to move on. But a few years later, they received a letter that would forever change their life. The killer wrote that he had become a Christian in prison. He now understood how terrible of a crime that he had committed, and he asked in his letter, Will you and your family ever forgive me for what I've done? Now think about that for a second. Just stop and ask yourself, how would you respond to that question if you were in that family's place? Well, Dawn put the letter down and she recalled a scripture that she just recently learned at church. It says, Ephesians 4.32 And be kind to one another, tender-hearted, forgiving each other just as God forgave you. 
Now, it wasn't easy, and it did not happen overnight. But she could not deny that as a Christian, she had to forgive him, just as Jesus forgave her. She was finally able to sit down, and she wrote a letter to Mr. Bell telling him that only because of grace that she'd received in her own life could she now let him know that he was forgiven. Now, today, you'll be studying about another killer seeking forgiveness. His name is King David. It is a story that will help each of us discern how we all fall short of God's preferred path for our lives. So when you're in our small group and on your own, you'll be reading the passage of Nathan confronting David and having the discussion about what does it mean to truly forgive or be forgiven. Let's take a moment and pray. Gracious and loving God, all of us fall short of your glory and grace. All of us need to seek forgiveness and to offer forgiveness. And it can be such a difficult thing to do. So gracious and loving God, I just pray at this time for anyone listening to this message and when viewing it for the first time that maybe never thought about the fact that they were a sinner in need of God's grace, that you'd help them to understand your grace and your love today. We pray for these things in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen.